Hello, welcome to Java Programming Tutorials, Chapter 28, Generics, brought to you by Anglo Technologies. My name is Harish. So in this session, we are going to learn about what is generics, the generic class and the generic method. So without wasting much time, let me jump into the next slide. So generics allow you to customize a generic method or class to whatever type we are working with. Okay, and what do you mean by generic class? A class that can refer to any type. So that class I can call it as generic class. So you might be wondered like what, what is this generic class and generic method? Before understanding about the generic class and generic method, I'll make you understand like what is generics, why we have to use it in Java programming language. Imagine you have a method that adds two numbers, but if we need to add two numbers of different types, okay, then we need to create separate add methods for the different types. In the sense, this slide explains you that very clearly. You can observe here, if I need to add two integers, then I have to write a method which returns, which, which is having the return type of integer. Similarly, if I need to add uh, two numbers of double type, okay, then I need to create a method which is having the return type double. And if I need to add uh, two numbers which, is, which are of floating type, then I need to create a method which, which will return the floating point numbers. So, but generics, what it does is generics allow you to create a single method that is customized for the type. Okay. And this is how the generic method looks. And whenever the user calls this method at that point of time, okay, you're going to tell this method is going to return integer double or float. In the sense, you can observe very clearly, this is a generic way or generic method. Your T is substituted for whatever the type you use. So whenever you call this add method, right at that point of time, you're going to tell like public int add int comma the parameters so this is how the generic method looks so to understand that very clearly let me take a simple example so we all know like how to create an array so let me show you that also so we all know like how to create array that's very simple so let me create array of integers demo is equal to new um, Okay, this is what or else li let me initialize it directly here itself so let me store the values like 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 fine so now I need to iterate this collection so how do I iterate I'll make use of for each loop so int sam or let me take it as result perfect line perfect meaning so demo so this is this is the way of using a for each loop so now I need to print each of them. So I'll take S Y S O. This is a shortcut to get the snippet to get the system dot dot print ln. You type S Y S O, then press Control Tab. Okay, it's going to provide you with this intelligence. So let me select that and press Enter. So now I need to print the result, which is going to indirectly print the array collection. So you can observe very clearly, it's going to print one, two, three, four, five, as expected. So what did we do is we initialized the array of integer type and we are iterating the array and we are getting the output similarly if I build an array of string type str is equal to so let me hello world okay so now Int. So this is not the int type, it's a string type. String result demo str. Now let me run the program. It is the result one and here also. Let me make it as result one and this is also the result one. So now when I run the program, again it's very simple. It's going to print this integer array as well as the string array. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to create an array of each type, int type and string type. Then we are using the for each loop to print the array. So what if I implement a generics here? So what we can do is um, we have created an array and to print array what we can do is what we, are what we are doing here right now is we are explicitly calling each for each loop to each type. Okay, but instead of using instead of uh, printing like this, we can make use of a common method which prints all the type of array. So how can we do that? We can do that with the help of generic generic concept. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll write a generic method, and that generic method is going to print any type of array. Okay, so uh, what we are going to do right now is we are going to create 
a single generic method which is going to print an array of different type so let me remove these things right now I'm going to create a generic method so how do I create a generic method public static and you're within this angular braces you're going to tell t t represents the type of a method when the user calls it you have to specify the type so I'm going to print I'm going to tell like print data print data okay then it is input input data okay and now inside that now what I'll do is okay this is a start this is a generic method okay you can observe very clearly this is how the syntax of a generic method looks okay so right now you can observe very clearly I'm not going to tell like what type of uh, what type of array this method is going to print okay when it is going to tell that when I call that method when I call this method explicitly inside this main method at that time I'm going to specify the type of this method okay so next is I have to use for each loop to print an array okay so the array is of t type and uh, yes, you will do result colon the input data so let me iterate it system dot out dot print ln so I'm going to print that result so you can observe very clearly I have a generic method here okay to this generic method if I pass uh, array of any type it's going to iterate that array and it's going to print it okay so in the main method what I'll do is I'll create an array so I'll call an integer class can create array with the help of integer class also so integer array phi so this is an integer array similarly let me print something like double double array it is 1.2 it is 2.2 and it is 3.3 .3, and it is 4.5 so this is a array of double type so now what I'll do is I'll add a line telling like SYSO control tab so what I'm going to print here is array integer array contains So now uh, what I need to do is I need to call this generic method to that generic method what I'm going to pass is my integer array okay so now what I'll do is I'll call that uh, print data method which is a generic method to that I'm going to pass my array the array name is int array so so you can observe very clear very clearly I'm passing this int array it goes here okay and is of int type so your by default in inside what happens here is instead of t when I call this method when I pass this int array default it takes like int okay how, how it looks exactly here is public static int okay it's of int array and here also the int so now when I run the program you can observe very clearly it's iterating the array okay of integer type similarly what I'll do is so next copy this I'll print here so integer array it's a string array contains so double array so now when I run the program so what's gonna happen is so very clearly okay sorry 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 for this this is not a string array it's a double array it's a double array so when I run the program you can observe very clearly it's going to print an integer array as well as the double array so what we are trying to do is we are created a generic method okay one generic method and that generic method is going to ar iterate array of any type because that method is generic 
I hope you understood this example very clearly. So now you understood like why we have to use a generic method. Okay, it avoids the code duplication. Like it, there is no necessity of uh, writing each for each loop for each of the integer type. Write one for each loop and make it as generic, and call the generic method when you're iterating the array. So, by when at the runtime, it's going to check the type and it's going to print it. Okay, this is what about. So let me explain only this part how it works. When I pass print data dot int array instead of t, right? Your wherever we have t, here, right? Instead of t, it's going to specify integer in the sense integer type of integer type. This method is going to return a integer array. But when you come to this one, print data double array. So when I call this method and when I pass this parameter, right? Instead of t, you can observe the data type as double. So now. I can call this method as generic. Like based on the user calling, it's going to, it's going to take the type of what it's going to return. Okay, this is what about generic method is. I hope you understood this very clearly. So generic class and method. We have learned about the generic method. Now let me show you an example of generic class. A generic class declaration looks like a non-generic class declaration. Okay, except that the class name is followed by a type parameter section. So let me show you a simple example like. How can you create a generic class? Okay, it's very simple. So let me go back here. Sorry, let me go back here. So let me remove this and these things too. So this public class sample is a normal class. Okay, if you want to make this generic, what you have to specify you have to add this angular braces and you have to specify the t. And now this class is a generic class. Okay, and now what I'll do is I'll create some fields which are private, which are of type private type. Okay, and it's of it's going to return uh, demo something like this a variable. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one method that is public void add. demo again it takes a parameter so now uh, this dot demo is equal to demo okay now I'll create one generic method here public get it's going to return or sorry the demo so you can observe very clearly we have one add method here and also I have one uh, get method here but you can observe here private t demo I'm not telling like what type of variable it is what type it's going to return whether it's going to return an integer double float or something like that here also a specified t this variable I don't know what type it is and it's I don't know like what type it's going to assign to this variable demo Okay, and this get also I don't know like what type it's going to uh, return me back because it's a generic method. Okay, my complete class is generic now. So what I'll do is, what I'll do is, I'll create an object of the class sample. Now I'll tell like it has to take an integer type. Okay, it has to take an integer type. Integer demo is equal to new. Let me copy this. Fine. So now what I can do is I can tell like integer demo dot I can I'm getting this add method. Yeah, I can add the things to it. So if I need to add, then I need to make use of new keyword. Okay, it's of type integer. And the value is 10 okay the value is 10 so now what I'll do is I'll make use of system dot out dot print ln so I'll tell I need to call this method okay I have, I'm having this add method so I added the thing so now I need to uh, get back the value whatever I've stored there so how can I do that I can get that with the help of integer demo dot get 
okay so now when I run the program you can observe here it's going to return me 10 because I'm storing the 10 um, okay I'm storing the 10 which is uh, uh, my class is of type integer so it's going to return me that but now you can observe very clearly this is of generic type class right I can uh, tell the type of this class when I create an object so I'm telling like when I create an object I'm telling this class is of integer type so suppose if I need to return uh, if I need this class to become a type of uh, string then I can tell like sample string str demo is equal to new sample okay then I'm going to tell str demo dot we all have that norm add method there in which where I've defined you can observe very clearly add I'm going to add slam and it's again the same way like okay it's this tr tr demo dot I have a get method let me call that so now when I run the program you can observe very clearly it's going to return me 10 as well as sam string also so this is a generic class the fields inside them all inside the class sample also generic in the sense when you create an object of the class sample right at that point of time you're going to tell the type of it so now your class become a type of integer class it's a become a type of string class okay and all the things present inside will will react only to the integer when you specify sample integer and it reacts only to the string when you specify sample string so I hope you understood like what is the advantage of using the uh, in generic class and generic method. So finally, thank you for listening. Have a great day. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel Anchor Training. You can also like our Facebook page visiting these URLs. You can also follow us on Twitter. You can also for further reference refer our website. We are on LinkedIn too. Last but not the least, please don't forget to give the feedback. Thank you. Have a great day.